Hey, what's good YouTube? My name is Craig and in this video, I will be sharing my 10 tips for creating your new normal this year. This video will help you to develop a positive mindset, get unstuck and regain control over your outlook on life. And by watching this video, you will be better positioned to live your best life this year. Are you ready? All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our fireside chat. So excited to be here. Happy New Year's Eve, Eve, Eve. <laughs> I know tomorrow is <laughs> New Year's Eve. So, um, so excited to be here today with my dearest friend, Craig Chavis, who's going to be sharing his amazing story and some amazing tips about creating your new normal. And, you know, um, this is actually a part of a fireside, fireside chat series that I've been hosting with really good, brilliant friends of mine. I'm extremely blessed to have brilliant people in my life, right? So I'm super excited about this. To our fireside chat. So excited to be here. I don't Happy know what New is Year's going on, Eve, but I hear my voice. <laughs> I wonder what that so, is. Um, so this is me. my dearest friend. Is it is it you or is it me? I think it's, I think it might be you. You muted yourself completely now. Okay, I'm back on. Yeah, there you go. Was. <laughs> <laughs> but let's carry on, carry on, carry on. Mm -hmm. um, so really, really excited to have Craig share about what are the ways we can create a new normal in our lives. So before we do that, I want to go ahead and introduce myself. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tammy Charles, and I am just passionate about sharing knowledge, sharing information, changing the world. Um, my job, my slash jobs are I am a professor. So I teach business management, social entrepreneurship at three different institutions. We'll talk about that later. Um, I'm also a consultant and a coach. I work with purpose-driven leaders to implement social change within their areas of influence. And I'm also passionate about um, economic justice. So I have a social enterprise called Tampa Bay Spark, where we have conversations, conscious conversations about race and how can we create change in our world. Um, I am delighted to be here with Craig Chavez, who's also going to introduce himself. But before we get started, I want to share to the backstory. I met Craig in grad school and we instantly just connected. He is absolutely a man of absolute brilliance. Kind of call him a Renaissance man. He'll share more why I call him a Renaissance man because he's just so good at a lot of things. He's great at making great connections um, and so full of wisdom. So whenever, whenever I feel stuck, I have Craig to go to. So I'm really excited to take some of the conversations we've had over the years and actually have it live because I think the world really needs to hear his story and the wisdom that he has to share with us today. And the other reason why we're having this conversation is because 2020 has been a difficult year for a lot of us. For many of us, we've experienced a lot of growth in our businesses, but we have dealt with a lot of collective grieving. So we want to really reimagine our lives as we enter into this new year, into this new season. So I'm gonna have Craig introduce himself. Craig, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me and the floor is yours. Hey, Tammy, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the kind introduction and I'm just really honored to be finally doing this collaboration that we've talked about like for years. I know. Like, Tammy's not lying to you. Like we have this WhatsApp chat that we've had for I think five years yeah. and we've just been conversing back and forth and we were like, yeah, we finally have to just take what we've said in private and bring it to the public. So I'm so glad that this is happening. But just a brief little introduction about me. My name's Craig Chavis, and I am an award-winning author and interdisciplinary coach on a mission to help entrepreneurs embrace, discover, embrace, and transform their purpose into profits. And just like Tammy, I'm extremely purpose-driven because I believe your purpose is really found at the intersection of your skills, talents, and market demand. And when you find your purpose, that really sets you apart from the pack because you get one, clarity, you get two, confidence, and three, you get a commitment to endure because this journey of entrepreneurship, it's no joke. And that kind of really led me to discovering my core entrepreneurial philosophy, which is really centered upon becoming the entrepreneur of your life. Because guess what? Like your life is a business. 
And when I first wrote my book, Burdens of a Dream, I had to really figure out what entrepreneurship meant to me. And I really define an entrepreneur as anybody who takes a calculated risk to create something out of nothing and share it with the world. Mm -hmm. Now, that can be a product, that can be a service, that can be a business, but in all actuality, it should be your life. Yeah. And so once I really discovered this, like this led me to this kind of multifaceted coaching philosophy. And that's how I define myself as an interdisciplinary coach, because the word interdisciplinary literally means coming from multiple areas of expertise or multiple areas of knowledge. So with my coaching, you get a little bit of business coaching, you get a little bit of personal development coaching, you get life coaching, you get success coaching, because it's really all wrapped around cultivating and growing the business of you. And that's just a little bit about me. And uh, just thanks again for having me on, Tammy. Oh my gosh, absolutely <laughs> love it. And I love the focus on interdisciplinary coach because I love the fact that you're leveraging different competencies to really create, to really effectuate leadership, create your business, create a life. Um, it's just not one specific discipline that allows you to be successful. It's about is it convergent thinking? I always get it confused. Convergent versus divergent thinking, right? So utilizing multiple disciplines mm -hmm. to create a new idea. Um, and I absolutely love that. So definitely follow Craig. Um, he'll share some of his social media um, platforms that he's on, but he is absolutely brilliant. So excited to have him on. So today we're actually going to be talking about this important topic of creating your new normal. And it's interesting because, you know, for a lot of us, you know, normal has been disrupted <laughs> by so many things this year, right? You know, it wasn't normal last year to wear a mask in public, you know? Um, and if you did, you know, some people actually do wear a mask even outside of this pandemic because they may have some health um, issues. So, um, but for most of us to have to wear a mask, for most of us to have to physical distance, for us to have to quarantine, um, so many things have been changed about the way in which we live our lives. But not only have we dealt with that collectively, but it has also disrupted us individually. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of us, we've been forced to create new normals for our own lives, whether we have realized it or not. Well, the purpose of this conversation is to be a little bit more intentional mm -hmm. about how can I leverage what I have learned in 2020 to create a life that I've never imagined before. And so today, Craig, um, when Craig and I were talking, he developed, because that's how fascinating he is, he developed 10 tips for you to create your new normal. So before I get started, if you are watching on YouTube, on Facebook, feel free to type in where you're from, who you are. We just, we just want to learn more. I'm back on. <laughs> Thank you to my amazing internet. I got yeah. kicked off. So going to continue. So really want to share, like, what are those 10 things that we all can do to really, really create a new normal in our lives? How can we live life with intention, right? So I had this saying when I first started out in my career, I was so tired of life happening to me. I want to happen to life, right? I want to show up and have more influence, have more say in what happens to me, right? So for a lot of us, we have that like that desire to take more control of our lives. So the conversations today is, well, how can we leverage these 10 tips to create our new normal? So I'm gonna jump right in because Craig, you had 10 amazing, amazing things to really talk about as it relates to creating our new normal for our lives. So I wanna start with the first one and then we'll kind of continue through. The other thing that I'll share with the audience is make sure you have a pen and paper ready because Craig is about to drop some notes. And for those of you who are planning out your 2021, mm -hmm. this is a really, really good time to take some notes and, and just allow what he's saying to really inform how you plan your next year. So I'm gonna start with the first one. The first tip you mentioned is to write your goals in the present. Share more about that. What does that mean to do that? And why is that important? 
So I actually kind of want to switch it up a little bit because I want to give people a little bit of context into how I came to this mentality of creating your new norm, new normal. Yeah, and so it. a little bit about my background is that I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, but um, growing up, I moved around a lot because of my father's job. So I was constantly having to get used to creating a new normal for myself because I was uprooted to new communities. Um, I ultimately wound up going to multiple high schools, um, but what kept me grounded was athletics. Um, I was good enough to get a division one football scholarship that took me down to Birmingham, Alabama, which was way different than what I was used to. But my whole identity was wrapped up in the sports. Like I was pretty good, maybe good enough to make uh, pro level on special teams or on a practice squad. Like I was really talented. Mm -hmm. But um, my sophomore year, I suffered a career ending injury that really led me to a spiral of depression. And so mm -hmm. I almost dropped out. But um, it was really my Spanish professor that intervened in my life and convinced me to study abroad in Costa Rica to clear my mind. And um, that experience of going to another country, learning a new language, meeting people from a, a different culture really set me on this new trajectory to become this kind of international businessman. And so I got back, I, I started DJing to make ends meet because I didn't have my full athletic scholarship anymore. And I used a lot of those proceeds to invest in study abroad in Spain for six months. And that got me addicted to travel. And so um, I got out of Alabama in four years. And when I moved to Tampa to uh, attend grad school and get my MBA, that's when I met Tammy. And um, I knocked out the MBA in a little over a year, which is not that normal. It's very quick. And um, once I was finishing up with that process, I was interviewing in New York and San Francisco for different jobs at tech companies. But I didn't see anybody who looked like me or really who thought like me in these environments. And I actually winded up not getting any job offers from any of the companies I was interviewing with. Mm. And so at that moment, I really had to decide what I was going to do for my future. I had to figure out how to manifest my future into reality because up until that point, I was really just following my parents' oversight. Like They wanted me to go to school. They wanted me to go to grad school. But after I didn't get a job, what was I going to do? Mm -hmm. And so luckily, I ran across a, a Peace Corps recruiter who loved my background, my entrepreneurial nature, my fluency in Spanish. And um, I got the opportunity to serve in the Peace Corps in Peru for two and a half years. And uh, basically what I was doing was business consulting. And all of this was in another language. Wow. But when I was down there, I had this dream to become a real life international businessman. I didn't know how this was going to happen, but I just put myself in the right mindset to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And so on the side of my consulting work, um, I learned how to distill. And when I was working with a lot of my clients, I would bring them some of the liqueurs that I was making on the side and actually built up a pretty big following. And that gave me enough courage to actually immigrate back to Peru um, after I finished my Peace Corps service to open up one of Peru and Latin America's actually first branded craft distillery. Oh, and so um, the business was successful. But unfortunately, after I signed a new lease uh, with my landlord, I found out they didn't own the property and uh, I had to liquidate my business because I had no legal right to be there. And so once again, my life was uprooted. And so that was my first big experience with failure. But I define failure as just like a first attempt in learning. Mm -hmm. And these experiences really helped me to create this positive and proactive mindset. And so since Peru, you know, I've gotten into project management. I also owned a blockchain startup. Um, I also recently became an award-winning published author. But through my um, experiences in entrepreneurship, this is what led me ultimately to coaching where I'm here right now. And I just really love what I do. But going through all those various ups and downs helped me to cultivate this mentality of being proactive, of being pro, um, being creative, and just allowing me to figure out that like the power really lies in my hands. And yeah. so that's how I got to where I'm at right now. And so this that mentality is what helped me to come up with these 10 tips for creating your new normal. So uh, I just want to give people a little bit of context into that um, okay. before we get into the first tip. But there's one more thing I also want to say is that like normal just means status quo. Mm -hmm. And normal is really whatever you create it or whatever you define it to be. And in my book, Burns of a Dream, I, I dedicated the book to all those who dare to answer their callings to abandon the status quo 
follow the road not taken and discover the person they're truly meant to become. And so that's the really the core really definition of you. creating your new normal. You have to abandon whatever the status quo is that you have or what the world has for you to make a life of your own. So just wanted to say love that. Love it. Thank <laughs> you so much. And I love the fact yeah. that you shared your story because I think mm -hmm. that's what makes you so interdisciplinary, right? You've mm -hmm. had all of these amazing experiences and they all have come into this moment that you're in right now where you're able to share your story, your testimony to transform lives and to create this amazing list of nuggets of wisdom. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Absolutely powerful. Bet, bet. Now let's, we can jump into it now. So yeah, let's, let's jump into it. So, the first, so I actually love that because the first um, tip in creating your new normal, or as Craig said, status quo, like what does that mean to you? But according to Craig, the first a tip is to write your goals down in the present. So tell us more about that. And so like writing your goals down in the present is really key because it really helps to trick your brain into thinking that you're already mm -hmm. in the process of accomplishing your goals. Um, because what most people do is that they write their goals in the future tense. So they'll say like, I will be successful. But what you should really be doing is saying that I am successful right now. And when you use those words like I am in the present, it's just so much more empowering. Because when you write your goals in the future tense, when you say I will or this will be that, you basically you're saying is that I don't have this right now. If I say I will be successful, I'm saying I'm not successful right now and that I just might be in the future. Well, that's not good enough. You have to say I am successful or you have to really write your goals down in the present because it helps to empower you and trick your brain into thinking that your goals are more achievable than they uh, really are. I absolutely love that. So is that like similar to an affirmation mm -hmm. and intention or is that different? What is the difference between writing mm -hmm. your goals in the present and like an affirmation and intention, would you say? I would say the end result. So like an affirmation is more of like a feeling, like... I am successful, gotcha. but like a goal will be like, okay, like we're on YouTube, we're streaming right now. Uh, a goal will be like, you know, I have a hundred thousand subscribers. So that's, this it's really different when you have like a tangible mm -hmm. defined outcome versus yeah. like a feeling. So that's what really separates between like a goal and more of an affirmation. I absolutely love that. Cause even for me, as I was, I was working out this morning and I was running on the treadmill and I had to remind, like one of my kind of like goal, like writing things in the present is I am an athlete, right? Like I just yeah. have to tell myself that. And when I yeah. tell myself that, I just feel like this burst of energy, even though I feel like I'm about to pass out, <laughs> right? Like legs are about to fall off. Yeah. Saying that I am an athlete, I want to become athletic, right? Yeah. That's the goal, but it's mm -hmm. like, say it in the present for me has made me feel so much stronger in this season of my life. This is the most fit I've been in like 10 years, right? So <laughs> I totally agree with saying that in the present because it it, it connects, it, there's like this divine connection yes. between you and that end result. So absolutely love that. The yeah. other tip that Craig has, so some of these tips, we're gonna kind of like chill on them. Some of them we'll just kind of say them and then we'll mm -hmm. keep moving. So again, if you're watching, have that notebook out. Um, the other tip that Craig has is read at least one book per month, right? So for a lot of us, you know, I know for me, I'm very auditory. So I really try to learn in different ways. But really, really, I think what Craig is trying to say, if you want to chime in, Craig, too, definitely. Of course. Uh, is, you know, you know, for me, how I I think for me, what has been really been important for me in 2020 is just try to find learning moments and make sure that I'm immediately applying them as much as possible, right? So when we're reading, when we're listening, watching this live, these are opportunities for us to take these nuggets and find ways to apply them to our lives. But mm -hmm. any quick kind of like feedback for that? Yeah, I mean, you brought up the perfect analogy of being this athlete, right? Because like our body is comprised of bones and muscles, mm -hmm. but the most important muscle we have is our, is our brains, literally. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're working out, like you want to be consistent because when you do that, you develop this thing called muscle memory. So it's kind of like the idea of just like going out for a little run versus like actually training for a marathon, mm -hmm. because guess what? Life is a marathon. Yeah. And so with that, you should constantly be working out your mind. 
And one of the best ways to do that is to read one book per month. So you're constantly bringing in new information, but you're also teaching your brain to retain more information and also develop capacities like speed reading where you're able to filter out junk and only retain like the most important nuggets that you're reading. So yeah. you got to really consistently exercise your mind and reading is one of the best ways to do that. I absolutely love that. And I think this is a great connection to the next point, which is we have got to review our personal finances and create a budget. This is for me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is so important for us to manage our finances. This year, it, we have to normalize that, right? Yeah. Normalize saving and budgeting. And so that is an important tip about making sure that we are financially healthy. Because one thing, and I share this with a lot of with my students too, is when you're financially healthy, there's implications for the rest of your life, right? Like I know I have money in my savings. So if I have an emergency, something unexpected comes up because a lot of things happened to us this year. We all have seen that we can't depend on our government. Uh, <laughs> any stimulus checks. So yeah. we can build wealth for ourselves. Let mm -hmm. us do that. Um, the next tip that Craig has is plan out your weekly schedule. So tell us more about that. Well, one of the things people really value too much is this whole concept of time management because it's really been programmed into our minds. Mm -hmm. Well, in all actuality, what supersedes time management is energy management. So for example, when I, I use my Sundays to plan out my weeks. And so I know every day during each, each period of time that I have certain things to accomplish. And so by understanding that between noon and one o'clock on Wednesday, December 30th, I have this event, it allowed me to manage my energy in a way that I can show up more filled up. And so a lot of people really waste their time because they waste their energy. And so by understanding when you should best use your energy, you actually produce higher yields. And so that's why energy management is really more important than time management. And then kind of one of the other little nuggets here by planning out your week is that you learn how to set your boundaries. And in all actuality, boundaries set you free. And so when I know when I have to work, when I know when I have to work out, when I know that I have to be around my friends or when I have to be around my family, I can dedicate that time that I allotted to them to give them my highest version of myself. So that's why I'm really adamant. I'm really scheduling out my time because it actually makes me more flexible to do what I have to do. So it's counterintuitive, but it really works. I love that. You said boundary is freedom. Boundary sets you free. Boundary sets you free. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love that. And so when it comes to planning out re weekly schedule, you know, are there any tools that you use like a planner? What do you use to kind of help you plan? So we're in a digital age right now. And honestly, Google Calendar is the greatest thing yeah. since sliced bread. Like I have multiple calendars, three or four calendars and they're color coded, but it sounds chaotic, but it's really not. And like, I honestly know every day that I have to work five hours or three hours or eight hours, like everything's really regimented. And it's just a simple scheduling tool that I have that allows me to really manage my energy and my time. Love it. Love it. I use Google Calendar too, and I have all the color codes, especially for the five jobs that I have. So if I don't know what's what, I won't show up to yeah. class or teach. I won't show up to my coaching mm -hmm. meetings. So I, I totally agree. So plan out your schedule, manage your finances. And I know for a lot of us, it's like, you know, this is this is this is something I know I need to do, but it's like mm -hmm. it's important for us to be intentional. We mm -hmm. want to create a holistic life in order to create this amazing new normal. So the next one, so we're at number five. Mm -hmm. If you're following, we're at number five. Number five is really amazing because Craig, you kind of talked about like, you know, when we're managing our energy, when we're creating those boundaries, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is if I know I have to reconnect with an old friend or family member, which is the next one, right? Yeah. It's about making sure what do I need to do with my time and mm -hmm. how do I manage my Google calendar to make sure that I can carve out time for my friendships, for my relationships, which is so important. I know for me, for a lot of people who know me, I love to work. <laughs> I, I'm done. I am an achiever. But one thing that I have learned, and especially going into the next year, is I think it's extremely important for me to look at my calendar and determine how can I carve out time for my friends and be intentional about that so the work doesn't become an excuse. So for a lot of us, 
all of these things are connected. Our ability mm -hmm. to manage our finances is connected to our ability to connect with people better because if we're stressed out about money, we don't want to deal with anybody, right? Um, our ability to read and write our goals in the present and to deal with self-management, grow in our emotional intelligence, all of those things are connected. So the next one is to find at least one digital mentor on YouTube. Tell yeah. us just a little bit more real quick about that. What do you mean by finding a digital mentor? So like in life, I, I learned this very quickly because I often learn my lessons the hard way by trying to just do things like on a whim. And when you're young, when you don't have much to lose, that could work. But as you get older or just in general, it's not the smartest way or the most effective way to learn. And so when you bring in a mentor, this really ha helps to expedite your learning and personal development because you're able to learn from other people's experiences. And like, there's really no reason to make a mistake in life when you could learn how to avoid that from just studying other people. And so, like I said, like we live in a digital virtual age and there's no excuse not to learn anything new. And so for me, YouTube in general has been like one of the greatest blessings ever, because as I mentioned earlier, like I used to own a distillery in Peru. Well, how did I figure out how to do that? Like I went on YouTube and just learned how to distill and then applied that, applied that and practiced that. And I learned how to build a business just by watching other people's videos. And through that, I was able to find a mentor, a person who actually wanted up investing in my business because I reached out to them through the internet. So it's just more about constantly learning and bringing new people into your life to really help to expedite your, your growth. And that's really what I do for a living is like I, I'm a mentor to new entrepreneurs and by them working with me, they're able to get results quicker than if they were just to do it on their own. Absolutely love it. Are there any like people you recommend <laughs> on YouTube or who, who's kind of like, who are you following? Well, the recommendation really is just to find people who are already doing what you seek to do or whatever you're interested in. And so like I'm about to launch a YouTube channel. So one of the people that I'm following is a guy named Graham Stephen because he's one of the most like prolific YouTubers out there. And yeah. like I bought his course just so that I could learn what to do, but then also what not to do. And by doing that, I'm really going to expedite my growth for my channel and also for my business because I'm following somebody that's already established. So that's just like one quick example on how you could do the same. I absolutely love that. And I know for a lot of us, when we're starting something new, it can be extremely intimidating. There are a lot of us, there are dreams that are literally sitting. They've been sitting for years. There are seeds that God has planted that have been sitting for years. And you're like, I don't even know where to start. And I think what Craig mentioned is so important. It is, well, who's doing what I want to do? And the thing about it is we may feel like, oh, someone else is already doing it. I shouldn't do it. What we're able to provide to this world because of our personality, our unique gifts, our unique viewpoints of the world will allow us to contribute something that's unique, right? So it's very important for us to understand that we're not replicating or duplicating what someone else has done. We're still providing something new, fresh, and innovative. We just have to believe that we have that within ourselves. And it's going back to point number one, Write down your goals in the present. Believe that what you want to do, you're doing it right now. So right. for those of you who are out there and you're like, oh, I want to start something new. I don't know where to start. Take heed to Craig's wisdom. <laughs> Look at who else, if it's a podcast, if it's a book, as we mentioned earlier, what, what are people doing right now that you want to do? And how can you sit at their feet and learn from them? It's actually really important. When you want to start something new, take time to learn first. Don't just jump, take some time to really learn about the, whether if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to start, publish your own book, talk to Craig. If you <laughs> want to start a social enterprise, talk to me. Um, but whatever it is, if you want to get into teaching, whatever it is, try to figure out who else is doing it and really learn from them. Because I love what you mentioned, Craig, the, you can learn what to do and what not to do. And that's mm -hmm. very important. So we, we're, we're already at number seven. We're yeah. reason pretty <laughs> And I absolutely love that. So for those of you who are following, we're at number seven. The next one is to develop at least one creative outlet, which I love because I love creativity. I love being creative. I love music and poetry. So tell us more about that. What does it mean to develop a creative outlet? And how is that connected to creating a new normal? 
Well, I mean, look at my brand name, Creative Craig. I mean, that's what I've literally embodied like for self. And that's kind of that whole concept of like being a modern Renaissance person. It's just, I was always interested in a lot of different things. Like you look at my past, you see distilling, you see DJing, you see authorship, you see being mentorship, you seeing being a division one college athlete, like none of this has any correlation except myself and how I decided to show up in the world at that specific time. And so for me, like I've realized that like creative energy is like the most power and uh, most powerful energy that we have as a person, like every day, like we're, we're creating we're creating new things. Like you, you go to work, you're creating something. You go to school, you're creating something. You're, you're cooking your meal, you're creating something. And so like when we have this abundance of energy, we need to find a positive way to really push that energy out into the world. And so whether it's learning a new skill, whether it's learning a new language, like anything, like creativity can be manifested in any different way. But when you have this build up of energy, you want to have an outlet, a positive outlet to place that energy. And so that's why it's really important to find something that you enjoy doing and just putting your heart and soul into it and just seeing what happens. And so I'm just a really big adamant on being creative and not wasting that precious resource that we have. And I absolutely love that because I think for me, this is something that I've been thinking about. And I was actually super serious when I said I love music. I remember when I was in college, I always tell people what got me through college was two things, prison break and <laughs> songwriting. Yeah, prison break got me through college because I just it just was amazing. Um, but also songwriting. So whenever I was, especially when I was in statistics, so I was really good at statistics, if anybody knows. It's a random gift that I had. I actually ended up becoming a statistics tutor. Statistics is obviously very complex. You're trying to figure out future data from past data, all, all kinds of formulas. But what helped me get through statistics was songwriting. So whenever I felt stuck, I started writing songs. And I used to write a lot of songs. I actually wanted to become a songwriter and I think I still should pro probably pursue that, right? Yeah. But it was because of the creative elements, the ability to put notes together with words and matching the melody. I used to go on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. When I mean, YouTube has been around for a while now that I think about it, mm -hmm. but I used to go on YouTube and listen to beats and I would use the beats to create a song. And that not only did it kind of, it helped me get through statistics, but it <laughs> also gave me a, just, it really empowered me. There's something about like, we are, you know, we're made in the image of God and God is a great creator. And so he has instilled in us this ability to create. And I totally agree with the fact that whatever we do, we need to look at it as I am creating something. Like I was listening to something on Clubhouse today and the woman said, look at your hands. With these hands, you will create wealth. And so when we're able to tap into that side of ourselves, and for those of you who are like, I am not creative at all, Tammy and Craig, what are you talking about? Right. You are. You may have to do some you know, paint and sit classes, or you may have to go to those clay, class, whatever it is to really ignite. What am I good at creatively? We all have some type of creative gift. I don't mm -hmm. care what who you are, but it's figuring out what that is. And so for some of you, it's how do I go back to point number four, planning out my weekly schedule and think about carving out some time to play mm -hmm. and carving out some time to maybe do some Legos, color, <laughs> There are so many different ways to be creative. And it's something that when we were kids, we used to think that playing was, you know, we loved playing when we were kids. But for some reason, when we become adults, that part of us just dies. And it doesn't right. mean that part of us should actually come alive even more. So for those of you who are watching, what are some ways can you be creative? How can you get in touch with that artistic side of yourself? And we, uh, Craig and I agree, if you do that, you will surprise yourself. You will surprise yourself, not just in that creative outlet, but also it will show up in your business. It will show up in your relationships and more. So take heed to that. I absolutely love that, Craig. Love that. Create a new normal. You know, tap your creative outlet. Mm -hmm. The next one I love, which is kind of connected to this creative outlet, is mm -hmm. schedule quarterly vacation and me days. So tell us more about that, because I love that one. You got to take time for yourself. I mean, there's a cliched, a cliched saying out here that health is wealth. And like they are, that saying is so true because guess what? Like you can't fill up somebody else's cup 
when yours is empty. Mm -hmm. So you always have to pour into yourself first. And it's really okay because like being selfish, there's nothing wrong with it. Like you have to honestly be selfish before you can be selfless. Like I have to recharge my batteries before I give to others. Like I can't show up as a coach if I'm dead, if I'm like brain dead or physically body dead. Like I have to recharge myself. I have to eat right. I have to take some time to heal so that when I do anything in life, like I'm showing up filled up. And so that's why you have to make sure you take time to rest your mind, your body, and your soul so that you can show up every day, be as creative as possible, manage your energy as much as possible, and just really take yourself to the next level. You have to take care of yourself. And so it's okay to take a vacation every now and then because you deserve it. And so this part of this American culture is like to be scared to take a vacation or it's bad that I'm taking an extra day off when yeah. in all actuality, you got to put yourself first yeah. and then everything else just flows in secondarily. I absolutely love it. So what are some things you do on your meet days? Like how do you, yeah. yeah, what are some things you do? So, I mean, like it's, it's the whole creativity thing. So how I wrote this book that you see behind me is that I took some time off and I just started like, I call it vomiting my ideas on paper. Love so it. when I have an abundance of time, that's when I'm like, hmm, how can I be creative? So I'll honestly watch YouTube videos. I'll go to the library or I'll just go explore and get lost, especially if, in, um, if I'm in a new place. Like I was out in Seattle a couple months ago and I just went out and explored the city even during COVID. Like, it's just like you said, you have to have this kind of like childlike approach to life. Like, mm -hmm. how can I explore? How can I have fun? How can I have play. And just by doing that, it just frees you to really enjoy your life because you're not meant to be working 24 seven, 365. Like you gotta, you gotta have some time off to really live. So okay. that's why scheduling these breaks are so important because you can't work if your body's busted. You can't work if your mind's busted. So you have to put like your mental, spirit, physical health first before you do anything in life. Absolutely love it. And this is something that, you know, for those of you who know me, I love taking personal retreats. Um, it's something that I started, especially when I was overcoming depression. Um, I started taking these retreats because I felt like I needed that time to immerse into my emotions, into myself, into my soul, and really deal with myself. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things that, you know, Craig has talked about in this list of creating new normals creating your own new normal is about working within yourself. If you don't deal with areas of insecurity, if, you, if there are areas that need to be healed, if there are losses that need to be grieved, you know, if you don't deal with that, it becomes extremely difficult for you to manage your finances, for you to take care of your health, which <clears throat> deals with this next tip that we're about to talk mm -hmm. about. So it's very important to you know, self-care is not just about massages are great. You know, <laughs> getting a facial is wonderful. You know, I'm about to do my first Reiki Healy se session dealing with chakras and stuff. But I know another piece about having those me days is taking some time to deal with your finances. Maybe that me day is let me take some time to budget. Um, let me take some time to figure out the meals that I need to eat. Let me take some time maybe to to read a book or to be more creative. Again, a lot of these tips are interconnected. When we think about creating a new normal, what are some of the things, again, the question we're gonna ask throughout this live is, what are some things can we begin to normalize? What? How can we make me time a status quo? Mm -hmm. It's not just some extracurricular activity or I'm gonna do something special for myself, which is, you know, it's true, it's special, but that needs to be status quo. Like rest mm -hmm. needs to be, Tammy Charles, that is cool because who knows? I struggle with that, but it's super duper important. I can tell you right now, um, when I think about this year, I, I've been telling people personally, now individually, collectively has been tough. Individually for me, 2020 has been my best year, if not in the last 10 years, because I decided to consciously deal with my ish and it was hard, right? So I scheduled me days to deal with 
why am I so angry or why am I struggling with this? What are, where, where are some of these insecurities coming from? Um, I used to, one, one thing I, I would do is I would schedule my therapy sessions before my <laughs> vacations at times, just so that my therapist can bring up some things that I need to reflect on. And I tell you, it has allowed me to move through life with a little tiny bit more ease. So those me days, make it mandatory. Those weekly sabbaticals, quarterly retreats, vacations, whatever is meaningful to you, make it status quo, normalize it because it will pay dividends in the future. It'll pay even dividends now. And then the people around you will love it. <laughs> they'll, you know, they'll be, when you're more at peace, you're able to love people more. And I love what you said, Craig, about you can't pour out from an empty cup. And I know that I've made that mistake time and time again. So it's very, very important for us to be filled in order to pour into others. So absolutely powerful. Mm -hmm. So we're already at tip number nine. Yes. Um, tip number nine, yes. those of you who are following, tip number nine is eat healthier and prep meals five days a week. I was just talking about this because it's so tough. What mm -hmm. can you give to us? Like, how can we like be a little bit more, dis how can I be more disciplined in this mm -hmm. area? <laughs> so that, like you said, everything is intertwined. And one of the ways that like I leverage my Sundays is not only to plan out my week, but to really cook my meals for the week in, in batches and controlling what you intake mentally is important, but also physically, because you're not going to have any energy if you're not feeding your body properly. And so like, there's many benefits to just eating consistently and planning out and making your own meals. A, it's like, it's just, you create a routine. This helps to establish more discipline. B, you're also able to eat healthier because fun fact, most of the food that's produced here in the US, especially fast foods or anything that you buy pre-prepared is full of sugars, is full of fats, is full mm -hmm. of salts. Like we are the most unhealthy culture, like in the world what i, I think it's like 51 percent of deaths in this country were from like heart disease mm -hmm. which a lot of that's attributed to being overweight like i think a third of the u.s population is obese mm -hmm. and i think half is overweight well you can't really show up filled up i'm gonna use that word again if yeah. you have no energy if you're out of shape and so just like learning how to cook healthier is not only going to add more years to your life, it's going to add more money to your wallet because like eating out is, is expensive. Yeah. And you can save a ton of money in bulk and eating, you know, maybe a couple things, a couple of the same things during the week. So that like you, when you do get to the weekends, you can indulge a little bit and you actually appreciate it more when you're like, hmm, I'm going to eat the same things four or five days a week but that's going to help me to get into better physical shape. But when I do have this one cheat meal, I'm really going to enjoy it. So really controlling your intake of what you eat is super crucial to showing up and performing at your highest levels. I absolutely love it. And it, it I'm telling you, it, it plays with your mind. Like I know when I'm not eating healthy, when I'm not working out, I am more vulnerable to negative thoughts. Yeah. Um, I'm more vulnerable in my relationships because every little thing I take as offense, I mean, every it's about creating, when we think about creating a, your new normal, it's about creating a life that allows you to show up the best way you possibly can, can right? Mm -hmm. So it's, when it comes to health, we, we can't emphasize it enough. It's very important. One of the things I actually started doing, so I plan to do my meals because I want to, it's very important to me. I work out all the time, but I'm not seeing my gains because <laughs> so it's a problem for me. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know I have to meal plan. Uh, but the other thing that, you know, I, I think it's extremely important is I've been developing my own personal board of directors around mm -hmm. health. Yeah, it's really important. And I'm doing this too, y'all. So take heed. I highly recommend if you so my insurance changed this next year. So I have to get a new primary care doctor, all those things. Plan those things out in advance. If you don't do it, if you already do it, then cool. I'm doing it. I didn't realize it's something I needed to do until recently. My dentist, dermatologist, my primary care doctor, my gastroenterologist, optometrist, Plan your personal care board of directors, your healthcare board of directors now, so that by the time the year starts, you're getting your annual physical exams. If I think, you know, if you're a woman, even if you're a man, you know, breast cancer checks, mm -hmm. all types of checks, just make sure you're getting those blood exams. Just make sure you are proactive with your health. 
Because one of the things that can cause us to fall down quickly is our health. We're not able to show up for our business. We end up having sick days. And yes, we get sick. Things happen that are beyond our control. But you want to try to be as proactive with your health as much as possible. Now, not just your physical health, but your mental health. I think I mentioned it multiple times. I have a therapist. Now, I am pretty much mentally healthy. This is the most healthy year mentally I have ever had. But I tell you, I still talk to my therapist because she still really helps me think proactively. What are some things I need to think about as I'm preparing for my future, as I'm dealing with my relationships? Like I'll have a conversation with her and she'll be like, oh, what's that thing right there? What? Why are you thinking that way? Why are you using that kind of language? I would never pick it up if I did not talk to my therapist, right? Mm -hmm. Life coach, like have that personal board of directors. I have one for my career, but have it for your health because it is extremely important. And as Craig mentioned, it starts with just simply planning out your meals. One thing I've had to learn is I can't just eat because it tastes good. I got to eat because it nourishes my body. As I was running on my treadmill today, and I don't know if this is a word for somebody because it was a word for me. So I was running on my treadmill today and I felt like God said, um, diminish or remove your soul ties with food. And it literally like, oh, like totally. I'm like running. I'm like, oh, snap. Was that the Lord? Like some of us have like soul ties. Like we use food to you know make us feel better we had a tough day we're dealing with a breakup and we're stressed and all that kind of stuff and i know for me i have used food to help me get get me through some things but i am learning that i if if i'm down i have to use something more productive and healthy to mm. deal with those unhealthy soul ties with food so if you're like i don't know where to start start with yourself figure out what's causing you to not plant those meals i know for me it's something deeper deal mm. with that i have a therapist and really, really work on, you know, planning out those meals because it's so important. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So we are at, drum roll, I don't know if you can yeah. drum roll. Yeah. Number 10, number mm -hmm. 10, decide who you do not want to be. Now, we're going to spend a little time on this because this is big, yeah. right? So I'm going to let you take the floor on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this, this is super critical because... Growing up in within this culture, within this country, we're always asked the wrong questions. And so growing up, every one of us was asked, what do you want to be when you're growing up? And I guarantee nobody answered that question with any type of conviction because it's so hard to just pinpoint that one thing that you want to do forever. And world, this world is changing so quickly that you have to be a person who's multifaceted, who's dynamic. And I used to hate this because I was always this quote unquote generalist. And people are like, you have to specialize. You have to do one thing. Well, being creative Craig is not possible to do that. And so as I was just going through my life journey, as I explained, like when I got done with my MBA, like I was like on this quote unquote corporate path. And when I was in these interviews, I just knew deep down inside, like, this is who I didn't want to be. I didn't just want to be this person in a cubicle for 30, 40, 50 years. And so at that moment, I decided like this wasn't going to be for me. And so when I was able to decide, like, I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to go right. I didn't want to go left. I didn't want to go back. The only direction I had to go was just forward into the unknown, like serving in the Peace Corps. And so like when you ask yourself the right questions in life, you'll get the right answers. But when you know that like you have a, a bunch of possibilities that you want to consider, just the most strategic way to move forward is to eliminate the things that don't work for you. And so when you eliminate the negative, you're left with more positive options. And so mm -hmm. this process of elimination by asking yourself, who do I not want to be? gives you this priceless thing called clarity, which most people don't have. And when you have clarity, you have a sense of direction, but more importantly, you have a sense of power and you're able to move forward in life more intentionally. And you're able to manifest things that will bring nothing but more good to you. So that's why you have to really ask yourself in 2021, who do I not want to be? 
where do I not want to be? What do I not want to do? And that's just going to leave you with a pool of more positive options. And uh, you'll be so happy that you ask yourself this right question. I absolutely love that. That's so powerful because it's connected to what we talked about for time management, right? So when we think about planning our weekly schedule, and this is going back to what Brianna Wilkerson said yesterday in our fireside chat is the must do, should do, like to do, right? Mm. She created this, and I actually wrote it down last night. I actually yeah. have my little clipboard right here. What do I, what, what, should, what must I do? What should I do? What would I like to do? And usually our should and our likes are just distractions. So yeah. we have to kind of, or we can delegate them and say, maybe have my assistant or have TaskRabbit do it. But what must I do? Because yeah. <laughs> TaskRabbit built my desk and my bookcase. Mm -hmm. I, I always like to do, and I'm not going to do that. Right. So, but the must I do is those that list that Craig curated for us so brilliantly, those are must do's, right? Yeah. You must take care of your health. You must read a book per month. You must plan out your meals and your time. Those are must do's. Now the likes to do may, you know, for me, like I was telling Brie yesterday, mm -hmm. I would like to eat that extra piece of pizza, but mm -hmm. no, I must be focused mm -hmm. on my health plan. So it's very, very important for us to begin thinking about what do I not, who do I not want to be? And that really, as you mentioned, creates some clarity. The follow-up question that I have for you is, how do you like, you know, do you write it down? Like, what do you, what are some things you do to help you stay focused on who do you not want to be? Oh, I had to go out the frame real quick because I got like literally 50 of these and out of the 50, like 49 are filled. Like I'm a big proponent of journaling. Like you got to write stuff down. One of the chapters in my book that you see up there is called the power of the pen. And that's because like when we try to just like remember stuff with our minds, um, mm -hmm. we oftentimes forget. And they say, when people say like the pen never forgets. So when you write stuff down, you actually burn more connections in your brain that allow you to boost your memory of what you just did. So you have to write stuff down on paper and then you revisit it consistently. And wow. by doing that, it just, it, you just program yourself. Like your, your, your brain is like the ultimate, the world's ultimate computer. Wow. And guess what computers, the computers are run on programming. How do you yeah. program stuff? Well, you got to write stuff down. And so yeah. I just, that's how I keep myself accountable. Cause I'm constantly revisiting these things that I'm writing down. And there's no, there's no secret on how I've been able to really have a great year and a great life. It's because like I've stuck to my goals and I'm a big proponent of this concept called magic. And I'm not talking about, you know, illusions or anything. Yeah. Um, my definition of magic is manifesting abstract goals into consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so that's putting in work. And so that starts out with writing your goals down, creating a plan, and then meticulously executing day by day by day. And then eventually over time, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, like I've done a lot. I've come a long way, but it starts with this first. And I, man, 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 so, so good. Because yo, this is so important y'all. You know, one thing that I, I, I love, I hear a lot of people say this too, like, you know, Beyonce has 24 hours, Obama, <laughs> Michelle, Obama, they have 24 hours, right? They have the same amount of hours that we do and they have accomplished a lot. Craig, <laughs> has 24 hours and he has accomplished a lot. I don't know how he does it. I'm, I'm sure he's a doppelganger somewhere. I don't, I don't know. But um, no, seriously though, but the reason why we say that is because for a lot of us, we're like, oh, I don't have the time or I'm not this. So there's a lot of excuses that we come up with when it comes to not effectuating. Manage, uh, what, is, what is magic again? Manifesting abstract goals into consciousness. Manifesting abstract goals into consciousness. And the way you do that is through, what is it again? Just putting in work. Putting in, put in the work, writing it down. There was a woman I was listening to yesterday, um, powerful, you know, I'm, for those of you who have never heard of Clubhouse, DM me later, absolutely love it. But there was a woman who was talking about how she has a list, I think she said she has 40 lists. Mm. She has a list for everything. She writes 
everything down. And, you know, for a lot of us, we may feel like our dreams are too big, right? Like, you know, I want to become an astronaut. That that may seem too big. What is the first step of becoming an astronaut? Maybe being good at calculus. I don't know. But, or I want to one day write a book. I know personally, I want to one day write a book. I know there's people in our audience who are like, I want to write a book one day, or I would love to record an album one day. I would love to start a business Ask yourself, what is that first thing you need to do to get there? And write it down. Just write that first step. Usually, sometimes that first step is what Craig said. Find that digital mentor, right? Find that person who's doing what you're doing and just listen to them and capture those ideas. Write it down. And then ask yourself, and then the other piece too is when you're reconnecting with that old friend or family member, Mm -hmm. ask them to hold you accountable to the things you have written down. Because those things will propel you to the things that God has called you to do. So if it feels for me, I'm the type of person I process through writing. If I don't write it down, I get very overwhelmed. So if you're like, I need to write it down first, then do that. Because it's almost like creating a a contract with yourself. You're Mm -hmm. like, you know what? If I wrote it down, I want to commit to the things that I have written down. So it's as simple as getting a journal. There are some nice journals at Dollar Tree, y'all. There's no <laughs> excuse. There are some nice filler papers at Dollar Tree. So don't feel like you have to get an expensive journal, whatever, just loosely paper. Just write those things down and save them somewhere to hold yourself accountable. So I mm-hmm. absolutely love that. So we reached all 10. Right. All 10. And Craig, you did a great job because I saw that you shared it on Facebook. So if you're trying to figure out what those 10 things are, it's on Facebook. But mm-hmm. is there any kind of like parting words of wisdom that you would like to share with us as we create our new normal in 2021? Yeah, um, I say one of the first things is that like regret is like a pill that shouldn't be swallowed. And so moving forward, just understand that like you really can't change the past. Like the only time that we have is the present. Um, There's this thing I I talk about, which is called 3D vision. And so 3D vision is the ability to learn from the past, um, plan for the future, but take massive action in the present. And so like your past is really there for you to learn from. Your future is really there for you to create but your present is really here for you to do. So it's up to you to create whatever your new normal is. And just understand that like, you know, everything you need, you already have. And if you don't know where to begin, look within. And you you have all the power you need. Uh, life is not easy, but life is really what you make it. And the last thing I'll say is it's like always remember that like your external reality is not something that you can control, but what you can control is like what goes on in here for the most, for like, and it's not easy, not, we never really truly master ourselves, but it's a really, this process of mastery and becoming that's really going to help you to achieve things that you've only dreamt of doing. So yeah, so get out there, make it happen. We only got what, one day left in the year? <laughs> And so make 2021 your, your best year yet by creating whatever your nor- your new normal is, whatever that shall be. I love that quote. If you don't know where to begin, look within. And I totally a million percent agree. And when you talk about mastery, the book that has changed my life this year is this book of mastering your emotions. Because we are emotional people, right? We say that we try to be rational, but we're mostly... <laughs> emotional human beings. Our emotions can play tricks on us. Sometimes you wake up and you're like, oh, I feel great today. And there's other days where you wake up and you're like, I don't I don't really feel all that. And it's like, how do you master what's inside? So I love that. This idea of if you don't know where to begin, look within. So we want to thank everyone so, so much for joining us. Craig, thank you for joining us and for sharing your incredible wisdom. I mean, those are, te- those, those, those 10 nuggets, you know, he gave us like free stuff here, man. That's worth a lot of money. <laughs> so <laughs> taking the time to really share with us all, how can we all create a new normal for our lives? And again, this year has forced us to do it already. So for all of us, how can we take those lessons? Like I saw, you know, I love seeing stuff on social media and I mm-hmm. saw about like 2020 was a year of a lot of lessons, 2021, apply them, 
Love that, right? So how can you take some time, get that journal out, um, mm -hmm. write down your vision, make it plain. And as you're writing them, I'm gonna go back to point number one, write down those goals in the present. Mm -hmm. Like I am healthy, I am financial, I am building wealth, I mm -hmm. am creative. Those things, those 10 tips, those golden nuggets, turn them into those, you know, affirmations, intentions, but write them as if they're in the present so that you are focused on reaching your goals. So thank you again, Craig. Thank you everyone for joining us. Have a wonderful, happy, happy new year. Um, we just, we hope and pray that this upcoming year would be a year of blessings, of new ideas, of healing, of growth for us individually and collectively. Thank you all so much for joining and have a good one. Thank See you. All. Thanks Thank for having you. me on, Tammy. Thank you so much, Craig. So in sum, each and every one of us has the capability to become the entrepreneur of our life. And by applying these 10 tips to your life, you'll be better positioned to live your best life this year. You'll also be better positioned to get unstuck, develop a more positive mindset, and regain more of more control over your outlook on life. So my question for you is, what was your favorite tip and how will you create your new normal this year? Drop your comments below and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can start this process today by subscribing to my channel. Also, be sure to click the bell so you can be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Until next time. Thank you.